In today's episode, you will see how I create this Carthaginian Empire and destroy Rome. Again. And no, this empire was not created from Tunis, but from this tiny Carthage. Thanks to this EU4 modification, which is gaining popularity on Steam, imagine an alternate history in which the Roman Empire never existed. Carthage won the Punic Wars and Rome city was razed to the ground. Then the Carthaginian Empire also fell. Thanks to this, the world in the 15th century looks completely different. Hello, imperialist Lucas here, blah blah blah. A bit of history to start with, which will tell you that the Carthage is an empire in decline, and I mean that literally. The main threat to me was my disloyal vassals. All in all, a very big threat, because none of my vassals had a period of peace with me. So their quest for freedom could be supported by any of my enemies. You know, when in trouble, turn to gods. That's why I took religious action in the first place. This is how religions look like in the world. I turned to the fertility god Baal for help. He certainly wasn't my type. But I do not judge. Then I took advantage of the privilege of the clergy and well-known privilege of the nobility. This has already improved my situation a bit. Unfortunately, I had no luck with the diplomatic advisor. I also couldn't afford to reduce my amount of crown land. That's why I didn't give away points privileges this time, but I handed out few more standard privileges. I will come back here later because there are some very strong new privileges, but unfortunately they cost crown lands. I did a trick for a cheaper military advisor than I chose my rivals, here I didn't have much choice, France and Egypt, here they are. Since I have big internal problems, I don't plan any wars at the beginning. I reduce army maintenance and disable fortresses. I send my fleet to protect my trade routes, as well as protection against pirates. Although I didn't know if there were any here, just in case in parliament, because yes, I had it. I started to debate on returning the crown lands to me. Victory, everyone accepted. Then I noticed that something was wrong with trade routes because Carthaginian trade turned out to be the end note. The second one is in Genoa, sorry, Italy. And there is not a trade node in England, sorry, in Celtia. Fortunately for me, Carthage has a great ruler, 535. Although, yes, with bad diplomatic skills. Additionally, I support him with these advisors. To be honest, the Punic ideas look quite good. Quite good mix of economic, military and naval ideas. Maybe I will do something crazy in this game and play with the fleet. Especially since I had very strong navy doctrine. I'll take it. I also made alliance with the largest country around who liked me. And which I didn't plan to conquer in the coming years. However, I avoided all diplomatic relations with countries in Mauritania. I want conquer them fast. And the same thing with countries in my region. My attention was drawn to Principality of Naples. With whom I plan to form an alliance. Because I saw that my religion could learn from other religion schools. Thanks to this, I managed to get these lovely bonuses. And the one that interested me the most. This is the one I will achieve thanks to the alliance with Naples. I sent the remaining diplomats to my vassals to improve relations here as quickly as possible. I also started to develop my vassals provinces. This made Algeria a little more loyal. Yes, I still had to wait 10 years for it to be integrated. The good news is that these are all my former territories, so they are free to me. No, 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 I don't want these alliances. Probably. Very quickly, my subjects formed an alliance among themselves. That's bad. After all these activities, we were faced with a really long history in the creation of the Carthaginian Empire. I also recruited an army, which further strengthened my position among my vassals. I have received news from Italy, which is here. In short, they tell us about the expulsion of a certain scarlet delegation from Italy, and that if they don't leave, they will lose their heads. Because Italy was the only one that retained its Roman religion and its separated culture, which resulted in increased tension between it and the Federation of Italian States, that is, a small local Holy Roman Empire. I wonder if I could join this empire. Although for now I was more concerned about whether I could dissolve it as quickly as possible. Because it seems that if this federation of Italian states carried out all of these reforms, in the end one big powerful empire would emerge. And that would be a problem. Of course, Rome lead the entire federation, which was Punic and liked us. It's funny, most of my missions lead to conflict with Rome. Because I will soon receive conquest objectives in Sardinia or Sicily. After less than three years, I manage to calm my vassals and they become more loyal. I think it's mainly because I've grown my army. Don't even try. After some time, I noticed that although we are a form of republic so far, I haven't had an election. And I won't have it, because our form of government is a specific republic with monarchists and orangists. It resembles Dutch Republic very much, although there were some different names here. But essentially, it was the same thing. The republic side is for trade. The monarchist side is for conquest. 
Hmm, but there are elections after all. With the death of the ruler, what? But he was very young, he was only 48. Again, it's time for elections in Carthage. Rabin Kahal, the National Assembly, must choose between an Adirim and Sufe for leadership. Well, I won't hesitate here because the choice is quite simple. The Renaissance also appeared in the war. In Greece, specifically in Athens, I also carried out the first reform of our republic. I endorse the idea of republicanism. After all, who ever heard of enacting laws for women? That's crazy idea. At the turn of the year 54 and 55, I restored all of the scattered sheep to the fold, thanks to which Carthage regained its national provinces, which stabilized the situation in my country and clearly defined my next conquests. But first, I started vassalizing my weak allies, which I has acquired in the meantime, Fezan and Yarabu. Since the republic has expanded, I had to distribute more seats in parliament, focusing of course on trade provinces. Our armies and fleet have significantly expanded too. I also work on capture the vassal in Majarka. The wealth of my country has increased greatly, and the time has come to immediately start a war in Mauritania. First, with these easier tribes. Unfortunately, one of them is a Nimes tribe, so we'll have slightly religious problems. Allies won't be needed. Overall, I had such advantage that I also decided on naval landing, the Cartagena D-Day in Marrakesh. Yes, the invading armies were prepared either well, but I don't plan to conquer Sicily or Sardinia quickly, because those would be much harder wars. In the meantime, I also developed Carthage to level 30, investing in infrastructure here, especially to give us institutions of renaissance. After all, Carthage is the pearl of the region. At least that's how it should be. Our enemies probably didn't stand a chance against me. I didn't even have to send the general there, even though they defend themselves in the mountains. That was very bad that I attacked them here. Very bad. Weird, my rulers have always been somehow very, but very old. Click and conquer. I also took cheap loans after the war to quickly invest in running institutions, which allowed me to quickly develop my military technology. As a result of the last war, I acquired a very good gold mine. And this trading monument. By the way, I checked the monuments on the map and turned out I am idiot because in our capital, we have have a mighty monument, and I wonder if I'm going to develop it further in mission. You can let me know in the comment, because I probably missed that, although this picture may suggest it. Why I should vassalize provinces in Mauritania or Carthage. I want to conquer those provinces anyway. After all, I haven't seen any vassal bonuses in my government reforms. Since all of these new conquered provinces were part of my main culture, we quickly form a core in these provinces, so there was no need to wait, I continued my further conquest. For the first ideas for Carthage, I choose Aristotle aristocratic ideas, because I noticed that here, lower in missions, we will get war elephants, so these ideas will work perfectly in Carthage, so we'll have our war elephants with cannons later. What a nice combination. Meanwhile, Rome carried out another reform in 64, surprisingly fast. Although I noticed that certain religious tensions started to grow here, could it lead to war? I must admit that for 20 years of the empire's existence, I have expanded the border quite well. I also earn about five times more, and I have an army twice as big, but unfortunately I think things were going too well, because suddenly one one to one ruler ascended to the throne, so I guess we are having good times in the country. Carthage has no rivals worthy of it on the international stage. Literally, we are more powerful than everyone. Unless I discovered the Ming Empire, I noticed that my western neighbor is dealing with some problems, and generally the situation in Egypt is not very good, because they can't even field a full army. So I decided to add fuel to the fire and declare war on them. The military campaign went rather as I expected. So much so that in addition to the money from Egypt, I conquered a piece of the coast, which may allow me to rebuild the Silk Road in the future, if I don't forget about it. I spent money from the loot primarily on building markets and to improve trade centers in provinces with trade bonuses. While reforming my religion, I decided to introduce certain Punic festivals. The end of the war will be celebrated in our country and it might increase my stability. A few more years have passed. In the meantime, I integrated two more of my vassals and I'm finishing integrating the third. I also prepared for another military campaign. So I declare war and enter Iberia. Of course, without our ally who will soon stop to be one, and to my misfortune, France will not help my enemies. Although the Carthaginian Empire may soon prove to be too large, the Punic Navy, the formidable navy of Carthage has risen anew, its might restored to former glory, in shipyards echoing with the hammering of creation, fleets of warships, agile and formidable have been crafted, embodying the indomitable spirit of Punic maritime prowess. I think I will invest in an admiral here. For my Carthage, one war is not enough. My opponents did not engage me in any battles, even though they 
this would have been their best chance to stop me. Unfortunately, my ally hindered more than helped by declaring wars on the countries I wanted to defeat. This annoyed me so much that I decided to dissolve the alliance, not because with another mission, I could turn him into my personal union. Choosing my second set of ideas, I noticed we get three new types, liberty, assimilation, and firepower, but they didn't seem very interesting overall. I chose administrative ideas to increase my conquests, and so Iberia was divided between two kingdoms, Suebi and Carthage. I can already see comments about the ugly borders. Oops, did I conquer too much? As our ruler was elected for the third time, he decided to write his autobiography, but it was very costly and probably not of the best quality. What did I pay for? Our kingdom was doing so well that I started expanding the ports in Carthage. In 1484, I formed alliances with every elector of the Italian Federation. However, we might not see what happens when religious tension reaches the level to start a war, because at that moment I decided to take full control of Iberia. And just then, news came from Rome, a wall of text, does anyone actually read this? There was a conspiracy and the murder of the previous ruler of Rome by Italian fighters. Now, they might have a civil war. I wasn't too concerned. I aimed to take power over Swaby. I wanted to recreate the union with this country. This drew me into a war with a coalition, including the Roman Emperor. It seemed I could dissolve the Italian Federation after capturing Rome. It was also a good time to start the Carthaginian Golden Age. Gaining naval supremacy was very important to me. I had to land in Rome and block the strait. Once my enemy's troops crossed it and began besieging the fortress, the the Roman fleet quickly became a submarine fleet. No one expected a Carthaginian army to land directly in Rome. More importantly, this allowed me to dissolve the Latin Federation. By the way, I think I was the first to do this on YouTube. With the fall of the Romans, the regent Ducalina Claudia had to accept her final defeat by the Punic forces. In 1486, the once prestigious regent signed her abdication from the Italian Federation's headquarters. Yes, the Federation finally went on a well-deserved rest. By the way, if you'd like to see a game about creating this Federation and going through all the reforms and what comes with it, let me know if you want me to prepare such an episode for you. This time, from Rome itself, I only took money because it will be an easier target in our future wars. During this war, I decided to use my former Italian allies. However, someone here must do the hard work in the northern part of southern Gaul. My armies definitely needed reform because we suffered huge losses in this war. It wasn't one-sided, I had to recruit more elephants. Fortunately, after a few more victories, the Natsuebi Union was established but at a great cost. This led to the conquest of all of Iberia, and the Galician campaign was already in preparation. We just need to gather our forces. In the Iberia region itself, there were several very interesting monuments, whether it was an iron mine, some powerful aqueducts, or a temple in Barricum. There was also an opportunity to build a powerful monument. Wow, that's not here! After nearly 50 years of gameplay, our world looked like this, and that's how it started. I'm curious how the consolidation of the Italian region will begin. After the war, securing this union was also key for me. Of course, this won't be easy because I have a very high aggressive expansion with this country, and the fact that I conquered them didn't sit well with them. I cared about it so much that I even paid off their debt. However, I could afford it. We had really good revenues. I can't believe Macedonia is losing the war with Illyria. This country is really strong, both militarily and technologically. Fortunately, I managed to secure the union, although we are on the edge. We also restored glory to our port, and it really became a world-class monument, which was honored with a great celebration. Before the campaign in Galicia, I decided to establish a foothold in Sicily and Sardinia. Sardinia was the first target. Our military also underwent reform. Thanks to this, we can have very strong war elephants. And they are really very strong, but they cost a fortune. Anyway, we should be able to afford them. And what happened here in Macedonia, specifically in Athens? Sardinia conquered. Wow, that's actually bad. Conquering Italy without a powerful coalition forming here is almost a miracle. That's why I started using my idle diplomats, and I began to improve relations with the smaller Italian states, encroaching on the Federation. The Italian Federation appears now to be weakened and fragmented version of its former self. I don't know, for me, it just doesn't exist. I won't hide the fact that I wanted to fight smaller Galician wars first to test my war elephants, but it seems I won't be able to do that because I had as many as eight of them. After my first successes in Gaul, I became an empire. Although our republic doesn't have financial issues, we do have problems with conscription. That's why I increased our draft everywhere. What happened here? In 1504, growing impatient, I attacked Gaul in our first Galician wars. The country was totally unprepared for this invasion because after the fall of the southern forts, the way to the capital was 
was wide open. The elephants really did well. They managed quite effectively. I easily defeated the enemy army. During this war, Ivan established a foothold in mystical Albion. The first campaign in Gaul ended in a great success. Ooh, I might have conquered a bit too much. In 1510, the era of reformation began. In this era, I could have cheaper Punic War elephants by only 25%. For the third idea, I chose exploratory ideas because it seems to me that if I don't do it, no one will discover the new world, although my union should have done it. Of course, I used tricks to shorten peace periods with the Gauls because I wanted to conquer Gauls' territory as quickly as possible. However, I must admit I'm amazed at how quickly Italia started conquering Italy and Macedonia started going where it shouldn't. That's why I decided to intensify my actions in Italy and conquer it as quickly as possible. After a quick invasion, Sicily and a few additional provinces were taken. I also started the Macedonian campaign to conquer Italy. What don't you understand? I began with a naval battle where I sank Macedonia's flagship. However, I also suffered losses. During this war, another coalition formed against me, likely to disappear like all the previous ones. Soon after, I began another campaign in Gaul. For Carthage, a war with one major power is clearly not enough. My main advantage against Gaul was my technological superiority. My enemies wanted to avoid fighting my army, but I didn't let them escape when our nation gained significant prestige internationally. No, I didn't choose to have cheaper elephants, but to conquer even more. I finished my second campaign in Gaul with significant conquest. However, my armies had to return home quickly because Macedonian armies appeared on my border. Well, our armies caused significant damage to the enemy during the elephant charge phase. I think army reform is very important to me, especially since I made a landing in the Balkans, that is, in Macedonia. In the meantime, I also discovered where the monument from Malta had been moved to because it was not in Malta. The war with the Macedonians was so long that their allies began to sign separate white peace proposals with us, although not all of them. As a result of this war, I gained Macedonia's possessions in Italy and more importantly, islands in the Mediterranean Sea. However, the war was very bloody. Yes, after my campaigns ended, the coalition disbanded. What a surprise! I also noticed that Macedonia was greatly weakened after the war with us. Their army reduced from 100,000 to 27,000 and their fleet was almost non-existent. I also began colonization in the New World. It turned out I was not alone here. The Celts and Gauls were already here. Wow, I received very powerful ships, so good that I decided to use them as toothpicks. This cheaper fleet still dominates the Mediterranean. Besides, building these ships would require me to change my doctrine, but I prefer elephants with cannons. After the Third Gallic War, I decided to cut off the country's access to the sea. In 1534, I started my Italian campaign by invading Italy, as it was the most powerful of the Italian states. The port city of Venice was impressive. By the way, I built a fortress on the island of Corfu. It's a perfect trap for bots. Click, boom, click, 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 Rome is ours. I also gained dominance in the Mediterranean region, which brought strong bonuses. By 1544, less than 100 years later, we established our first new colony in just just over 100 years, we transformed from a declining tiny empire into a truly powerful Carthage while burning and simultaneously rebuilding Rome. So is Carthage to become the heir of Hannibal after the Egyptian or rather Macedonian Egyptian campaign? Let's proceed further with this. Unfortunately, the Skol survived the fourth campaign, not just in one village but in three. The next wars in Italy won't be so easy because Macedonia guaranteed independence to all the surrounding countries. Who cares? The rebellions bothered me more since I had been exceeding conquest limits for 20 years. Luckily, I had a technological advantage over Macedonia because my soldiers used muskets while they still used spears. I thought one war was not enough for me, so I decided to also conquer the remaining territories in Egypt. But not from Egypt. There were a lot of yellow nations in this region. Our fleet still dominated the Mediterranean coasts, literally sinking the Macedonian fleet. I heavily indebted the Macedonians in this war, meanwhile conquering their Caribbean colonies from the Celts and Gauls. I also started establishing a foothold in Mexicania. But in the next war with Rome, I had to humble the great mighty Severoslavia. Finally, after a few years, I started another war with Macedonia. And I found Egypt. Our main goal is to conquer all the provinces required for this path. There are quite a few. My troops attacked through Macedonia and again the Persian troops probably moved on Egypt for some reason. With the destruction of another Macedonian flagship, their entire fleet went down. Almost all. One galley remained and I think I found it. Luckily, the Macedonian army avoided battles with me and moved on Persia, allowing me to besiege fortresses in Anatolia peacefully. We conquered Alexander's land, secured Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and now I need to conquer the entire Phoenician region, meaning war with the Persians is coming. 
Sorry, there are several interesting monuments in this region. Hmm, Persia will be a tough war. They have a small coalition of states here, actually satrapies. Overall, Macedonia and Persia are two powers right after us, although we are four times larger. And what's this religion? It's some religion with a picture. This religion is called Paradosi and originates from Hellenism. Interesting, I also took over Jordan because there's a monument here that will be very, very necessary for me soon to integrate our personal union faster. I'm just a bit scared of conquering a few Christian provinces. As we know, it didn't end well for the ancient world. Now it's time to start the tough war with the Persian Empire. Only I have the 14th level of technology, all my opponents have the 12th. I guess I know why their armies aren't heading my way. Yes, definitely, they don't stand a chance against my army. But luckily, in this war, I needed only three provinces. Give them to me. I finally managed to combine elephants with cannons and introduce them. Cavalry fire plus one is a very strong modifier. I conquered the last Roman provinces and then moved on to Macedonia, where I felt so confident in the war that I divided my army into smaller ones and wanted to capture as many fortresses at once as possible. Just for fun, I decided to sink the entire Macedonian fleet for the third time literally zero ships. Playing with the Carthaginian fleet is really very pleasant. However, after a bloody war, Hannibal's legacy was restored. But to change the name of our empire, we would need to be at least a kingdom. Such a legacy, unfortunately, is not foreseen for the Carthaginian Republic. Beautiful conquests. And, if, and in this episode, I will show you effective tactics for playing Sardinia Piedmont. Yes, I created this empire from this little Savoy. This Italian principality has unique national ideas that allow it to cope very quickly with aggressive expansion. Sardinia Piedmont is even better at this, so creating the Roman Empire is very fun with this country. 